Now listen to me, beloved. I have started preaching. Don't pretend about it. God will not come down physically to help you. He will send people. It's a sign of smallness to pretend that the people that God used for you are nothing. Just because you can now speak some grammar through your nostrils. Stop pretending about it. Learn to acknowledge the people that God has used for you. Huh. Occupy your place. What a theme. I want to read a scripture to you from the book of Luke, chapter number 8. I'll read a few verses, and then I'll jump to a few verses. Luke, chapter number 8. And I want to read from verse 41 to verse 42. And then I'll skip to 49 to 56. Luke chapter 8, verses 41 and 42. And behold, there came a man named Jairus. And he was a ruler of the synagogue. And he fell down at Jesus' feet and besought him that he would come into his house. For he had only one only daughter, about 12 years of age, and she lay a dying. But as he went, the people thronged him. And then I move to verse 49. While he yet spake, there cometh one from the ruler of the synagogue's house, saying to him, Thy daughter is dead. Trouble not the master. But when Jesus heard it, he answered him, saying, Fear not, believe only, and she shall be made whole. 51, and when he came into the house, he suffered no man to go in, save Peter and James and John, and the father and the mother of the maiden. And all wept and bewailed her, but he said, Weep not, she is not dead, but sleepeth. And they loved him to scan, knowing that she was dead. And he put them all out and took her by the hand and called, saying, Maid, arise. And her spirit came again. And she arose straightway and he commanded to give her meat. And her parents were astonished. But he charged them that they should tell no man what was done. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in our hearts in the name of Jesus. Under this theme that God has given to his servants, Occupy your place. I want to be speaking to this house tonight on a message titled, Made Arise. Made Arise. Made Arise. The woman is a very, very complex being. And I have a feeling that was why God created her last. God needed to spend some good time fashioning the woman. Everything that God forgot when he was creating the man, he put in the woman. For instance, the breast, the womb. God did over time when he was creating the woman. And after he created the woman, he started resting. He never rested after he created the man. After he created the lion, he didn't rest. He went, but after he created the woman, and God looked and he saw for the first time that it was not just good, but very good. Very good. Very good. And beloved, you know the story very well, but let me refresh your mind a little. When the devil came to the Garden of Eden to make man fall, the Bible tells me that the woman ate and gave the fruit to her husband. But you know, beloved, when God came to bring that judgment and God said to Adam, Adam, why did you do this? The, Adam said, did I ever ask you for a wife? The wife, the woman you gave me caused it. From Genesis to Revelation, God never responded to that, you know, accusation. But God just made up his mind. I will no longer give a wife to any man. Who also ever findeth a wife? You will now begin to find. Now, when it was the turn of the woman, God said to the woman, Woman, why did you do it? The woman said, I am a relationship conscious person. 
Even though I am in, the, in a fallen state, but I refuse to break covenants. I refuse to blame you, God, and I refuse to blame my husband. I join hands with you to blame the enemy. The devil deceived me. The serpent deceived me. And God said, did I hear you well? Woman, from today I have made up my mind to honor you eternally. I exclude man from the plan of salvation. Only you shall carry the Savior. Only you shall carry. The seed of the woman shall carry the Savior. The only role the man had to play in the plan of salvation was that of a messenger. Carry this baby and the mother to Israel. Okay. Bring them back, okay, sir. But only the woman, the woman carried the seed. So, woman, I wanted to know that the man was created because he was wanted, but you were created because you were needed. God that I know is too organized to be absent-minded. When he created you, he created you for a purpose. He wired you with a purpose in his mind. He put something on your inside. You may have come naked, but you didn't come empty. And he put a seat and a throne on the scene and the platform of life for you as a woman to sit on. You were created to meet needs as a woman. This story is very interesting to me. And I want us to glean it according to how the Holy Ghost, you know, will be leading us. Here is a lady. Here is a young girl. The Bible says she was 12 years old. And the Bible tells me that she died. Now, when you look at this age, age 12, this girl was about to enter her teen years. When the fullness of womanhood will begin to manifest. When she will begin to prepare for motherhood. When she will begin to prepare and plan for her life to be what God had ordained her to be. At the nick of that season in her life, the enemy struck and killed her. The maid died. And the Bible says that her father was a ruler of the synagogue. Jairus was his name. He went to see Jesus and said to him, just come to my house. My baby is dying. At that time, that girl hadn't even died. But you know, the man went and said, this girl has a place to occupy. But now she's dead. What will you do, master? And beloved, I want to pause tonight to say this. A lot of women have places that are unoccupied. And these unoccupied seats are preaching. Many women cannot occupy their places today for several reasons. Some of them are dying. Some of them are dead. What are the things that kill women. What are the things that kill maids? How come that at the quarter to a maid's living, she dies? What are the things? This bothers me a lot as I walk with God and as I counsel with women. Several things kill ladies. Come my sister. Several things Kill ladies, singles, and married. And a lot of women that are listening to me tonight, this may be the pictorial image of your life. Watch this beautiful lady. Imagine that she was Jairus's daughter. About to blossom. About to matter about to begin her education at a very, very serious level, which will eventually lead to her prosperity and which will eventually lead to her being able to take care of her parents or whatever is attached to her destiny. And gradually, she begins to die. And after some time, cover you with the blood of Jesus because you will not die. And after some time, she dies. 
Are there not women that are dying or that are dead? Why? Because of complex. Because you have had so much of negative words, you no longer believe you have a place to occupy. People have told you several things and you have remained on the floor for a long time. Look at how ugly you are. That's all you hear from your boyfriend. That's all you hear from your in-laws. That's what you hear from your mother. Look at how ugly you are. That's what you hear from your husband. Look at how terrible you are. You can't even keep a home. Look at you. You are 37 and you are not even married. You've got to get out of this house. Look at you. Don't you know that something is wrong with you? Is this not what you hear from pastors? Is this not what you hear from confidence? Is this not what you hear from people that seem or are supposed to love you? Look at you. You've been married for six years and you don't have a baby. What kills mates? Because before you can occupy your place, oh maid and maiden of God, you've got to learn how to arise. In the name of Jesus, I speak prophetically. You are rising up. Psychologically, a lot of women are on the floor. Because when they look at sister so and so, they went to the same university. They graduated together. That one has three children. Now she's almost becoming a grandmother. And you are not even married. And you wake up every day dead. And when they talk about occupying your place, you say, I've not even stood up not to talk of sitting down on my seat. You go to bed crying every night. There is healing for you in this conference. You look at yourself in the mirror and you have every reason to feel bad about your destiny. You are the reason why God brought me 6,000 kilometers away. Yeah, you are the reason. Dead or dying. What are the things that make women die? Complex. Inferiority complex. Sometimes psychological things. Sometimes financial challenges. Sometimes marital challenges and afflictions. Sometimes problems over children. Don't be deceived by the beautiful dresses women wear. Everybody has an issue. Don't be deceived by what you see. A lot of waters have passed under the bridge. But tonight I speak to you, maid. There is a place that is empty, vacant, that is preaching a message. You've got to arise. And there are no marriages that are dead today. When we talk about maid, arise. That maid may even be your marriage. That maid may be your financial life. That maid may be your destiny. Whatever has kept any aspect of your life on the floor, I command you to arise in the name of Jesus. What happened to this girl? The Bible says her father, a ruler of the synagogue, when he saw that she was dying, he jumped out of the house to meet the master. And tonight I'm taking you somewhere and I want to ask a question. Where are the fathers? Where are the gyroses? Where are the fathers? Ruler of the synagogue. Yet he could still stand up for his daughter. Many women are on the floor looking for a father that will show them the place that God has reserved for them. Many women are on the floor bruised, battered, beaten by the vicissitudes of life looking for fathers that will hold their hands and pull them up and speak to them. May arise and occupy your place. 
But what do we have today? Fathers that abuse maids. Fathers that sleep with maids. What do we have today? How come that women are not occupying their places? Because when those women were dying, the gyroses of life were busy ruling in the synagogues. Counting the money. Changing the cars. Building edifices without building the people. Women that are here tonight, some of you are bleeding. God sent me to you to tell you that you have stayed for too long on the floor. It's time for you to arise. It's time for you to arise and take your place in destiny. Stop crying over spilled milk. The man that jilted you and left you 11 months ago, why are you still bleeding? Women, drop that excess luggage and move on to your place of destiny. The Bible tells me that that man went to Jesus. He knelt down and he fell at the master's feet. May the fathers arise tonight and fall at the master's feet on our behalf so that women can arise. And the Bible tells me that while Jesus was coming, another woman that, has an, that had an issue pulled his dress. Oh, women have issues. Pulled his dress. And you know the story very well. While Jesus was speaking to the woman, somebody came from the, the ruler's house. Stop troubling the master. Your daughter is dead. I'm coming. Stop troubling the master. Your daughter is dead. And Jesus looked at the man and said, you've gone this far. You can't afford to give up. If you believe, your daughter will live. And when Jesus got into the house, people were wailing and mourning. And there are no people that are weeping today thinking you are dead. They shall weep in vain. Yeah. And you know what Jesus did? He pushed all of them out. And then he took only the father that interceded on behalf of the maid. He took the mother that stayed at home nurturing the maid. And he took three disciples. And when he got in there, he said, Maid! And she that was, was not is, she that was dead, arose. And after she arose, she went to occupy her place. Beloved, I want you to listen to me very, very carefully tonight. Because God laid it on my heart to speak about certain things that will help you to arise. It took a father somewhere to intercede. It took a mother somewhere to nurture the dying maid. And it took God to call her forth so she could take her place. Maid, arise. How will you arise? You'll arise by reason of the people that God sends your way. And that is what I'm speaking on tonight. You do not belong to the floor. Your marriage does not belong to the floor. Your financial life does not belong to the floor. You must arise by force or by choice. And you must occupy the place. Therefore, tonight, I want to pause half of the message. I want to pause. If there is any area of your life where you go to bed crying every day or almost every day, if there's any area of your life that is a picture of what I just depicted to you, you are on the floor while your mates are going. You are on the floor while things are happening around you. You are on the floor when it seems as if, you know, God is blessing everybody. And you are in the sanctuary tonight. Stand up. 
is a prophetic thing. Arise. Maids, arise. He did not create you to be on the floor. He did not create you to make your seat to be empty. Arise. Are you this many? Now, put your right hand on your forehead. I speak by authority. The authority conferred on me by God and his word tonight. Every maid that is on the floor in any aspect of your life, arise in the name of Jesus. I command it so. And I rebuke every generational curse in the name of Jesus. And I decree that by the power that raised Jesus from the dead, you will never die. In that area of your life, you will never go down. In the name of Jesus. Maid, arise. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Celebrate your new level. Thank you, my sister. Now listen to me, beloved. We saw the dimension of God in the life of that lady that was dead. But we also saw the dimension of humanity. And that is what I'm speaking to you about tonight. There are people in your life that must occupy their places for you to occupy your place. The primary one is God. The one that speaks to your spirit, the one that speaks to your destiny, the one that tells you to arise. And he is the most important. But secondarily, there are human fac factors, human beings, people that are crucial to your destiny, people that must be present in your life if you will occupy your place. You must understand that the last time God came down physically to planet Earth was at Calvary. Henceforth, from then, he's been coming via human beings. And when I try to categorize the people in your life, I saw four groups. The first group that <laughs> are in everybody's life that's why some of us are on the floor, but we have reason. Are the people that are in your life to hold you. They are there to stop you. Some of you are looking at your destinies. You have a picture of what God had spoken to you. Some of you, you have beautiful dreams. You have things that you love to have. But there are people around you. There are forces around you. There are people in your life that are halting you. H-A-L-T. They halt you. Which place do you want to occupy? Don't forget I'm here for healings. And other speakers are here, you know, for different assignments. I'm here for healings. And they are telling you, you cannot go further. Yes, you have a place. Yes, your pastor has told you you have a place. Yes, we know you are conscious of it. But we are here to halt you. There are forces that halt people in life. There are forces that stop people in life. And there are human beings. Beloved, listen to me. The things that make people to succeed are invisible. And the things that make people to fail are invisible. They're invisible. <laughs> There are forces that all they know how to do is hold people, stop people, hinder people from fulfilling their destiny. Yes, the devil may be the principal, whatever, but there are also human beings. And some of you tonight, you need to delete such people that won't let you occupy your place in your life. I'll share this. I know this is going around the world. Therefore, I will not be able to give some details for security reasons. But recently, Mama, I was almost poisoned by a very close person. Here are the next statement I'm about to make. Don't be so trusting to be careless. Don't trust the wrong people. Some of you, the reason why you have not been able to occupy your places of destiny is because you want to please everybody. There are people 
people that are out, there is nothing you can do about it. They are there to halt you. Stop befriending them. I went to visit this relation of mine because for years she just wouldn't greet us. What sin did we commit because my father did not die? Rather than die, God is lifting the heads of his children and we are making his life comfortable, removing suffering from his life. About nine years ago, doctors told me, go give your father the best your treatment you can give him, food and all that, because he has a few, just a few days to live. He was already smelling. And somehow, somehow, God turned the table around. There are people you can never set to quarrel with. Just make sure they are your sisters, but don't, make, don't let them be your friend. There's a difference between the two. Your sister, so that you can get to heaven, but not your friend. So I went visiting this person. I went to visit my father in the village and then, you know, close relation, very close relation and decided to visit. Let's visit. I'm a Christian. I'm a preacher. I don't want nothing to pollute the oil upon my head. So let's see. This thing must stop. No jewelry, nothing. They don't wear. Some people will be shocked when we get to heaven. With your makeup, meet me in heaven. With your trouser jeans, we'll see at the top. So let's go on, beloved. Let's, let's talk about this. Maid, you must arise tonight. And in the name of Jesus, you are arising. But there are people that God uses to help you arise. But there are people that want to hurt you. Who do you even think you are? Are you the only person that God can bless? Oh, you just changed your car again. You and your husband, hello, honey. <laughs> and on and on like that. So I went visiting this person with all my children and some of my siblings. And we were offered food. Now, I'm a very practical person. I'll tell you when I miss it. Instead of me blessing the food, I asked the person's husband to bless the food. There was this prayer, prayer. And we started eating. Then I noticed that my first son was not eating. I said, hi, Dave. You're not eating? He said, mom, I'm not led to take this food. Ah, oh, I said, me, I said, mom, mom, mom. <laughs> Don't be so trusting to be careless. I said, this person can't hurt me. But there are people that are there to hold you. When I was serving my food, I took just a little, and then she took the, the spoon from me and said, no, you have to take something. So she began to dig inside the pot, looking for a particular meat. She put it big, the only type in that pot. She put it on my plate. And I said, I don't eat. I said, no, I don't want to eat it. Now, when I saw that she moved, I saw a plate and I rolled the meat. I didn't know my son would eat it. We finished. All of us that ate that food almost died that night. But that was even small. I was in church a few hours after. You know, we traveled back to my base. And I was in church sitting down when somebody tapped me and said, Mama, somebody, you know, we need your attention. I rushed there and my son was dying. I said to him, is it because you drove? Are you this lazy? Hello, honey. He said, Mom. Mom, ah. Straight to the hospital. We spent three days in the hospital. And the doctors discovered it was food poison. Don't be so trusting to be careless. A lot of women have died before they got to their places. Because they are not conscious of the fact that there are people that are there to hold you. They will put obstacles on your way. You are overcoming tonight. Hmm. I don't want to give you details because God replied on our behalf. And one of her own had to die. In, in my place and in my son's place. There is a God in heaven that fights battles. Everyone that tries to hold you from occupying your place, I curse them tonight in the name of Jesus. If you think there is no battle, you are joking. There are people that have made up their minds to hold you, to stop you, to limit you. Tonight we curse them in the name of Jesus. 
please sit down. Number two, we have people that are out to hurt you. H-U-R-U-T. The first set, they try to hurt you. That is your throne. But you can't get there. Let's waste your time. Let's stop you. Let's hinder you. Let's put some sickness. Let's put some problems. Let's put some challenges so that you'll be looking at that place and that throne, but you can't get there. Slow motion. Every spiritual ghost in your life, I curse it in the name of Jesus. But this set of people, they are out to hurt you. H-U-R-O-T. They are there to afflict you. The peninas of life. They are not happy when you are happy. Sometimes they appear to love you. Sometimes they even help you to decorate the place and the seat. But right on their inside, they hate you. They use their tongues against you. Are you the only one? We saw you when you started the ministry. How come that? Blah, 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 blah. Where were they? When you were helping your husband to push the car. Only grave diggers start at the top. I was telling some people recently. I said, I got saved 30 years ago. And I started paying my tithe 29 years ago. I didn't start preaching on TV until about nine years ago. And I didn't start, God did not put me on air internationally until last year. Preparation, he was hiding me somewhere. You just got saved and you want to look like your first lady. You need deliverance. And tonight I can do deliverance for you. I'm not a deliverance minister, but I can ask God to anoint me to do it for you. You want to wear what she wears. You want to be like her. You want to carry yourself like her. People can inspire you, but excuse me, please. Wait patiently for your time. There are people that want to hurt you. Therefore, some of you that are here tonight, stop believing and stop repeating the lies people tell about you. Stop repeating. Did you hear what so and so said? With all that I did for her, stop repeating it. Because the more you repeat it, the more you believe it. It is evangelism. So don't worry. People are talking. Let them talk. It's a lie. People are not talking. She's the one talking. So don't believe it. They want to hurt you. Stop allowing people to change the music of your life. Stop allowing people to make you dance the dance they want you to dance. Stop allowing people to call you the name that God did not give to you. They are there to hurt you. Some of you are here tonight, you've been hurt. Hurt by your husband. Hurt by your in-laws. Hurt by people you trusted. So one pastor's wife told me, my father tiptoes to my bedroom every night to sleep with me. When I was a child, a lot is happening. One woman said to me, two of my sisters lived with me and each of them has a child for my husband. Women are hurting. And that is why they can't occupy their places. In this conference, we're here to teach you to occupy your place, to inspire you, to let you know you have a place. But some of you, you are struggling on the way. And I was surprised when God gave me this assignment because this wasn't the message I intended to preach. When God changed it, I said, God, this is not really my area. I said, that is your assignment. Some of you are hurting. You are hurting because of what somebody did. People you blessed People you loved, people you served with your heart and your life and your destiny, and they just turned around. And people believe their story against you. All out to hurt you. I want you to receive healing tonight. Made, you must arise. And number three, we have people that want to have you. They want to possess you. They love you and hate you at the same time. There's something in psychology that is called love-hate relationship. What do they do? They eliminate the good people that are in your life. They lie against them. They make you feel that that person does not love you genuinely. The person that has been serving you for the past five years. They cook up stories about the person. They do one thing or the other. They distort facts. 
they disrupt God-sent relationships. They make you hate the people that love you. That's what they do. They make you feel that the people that are around you, that God has planted around you, that are meant to help you, are there for one thing or the other. So that they can have you. And they don't have what it takes to take you to the next level. They know that once you come, once they have you, you become stagnant. And you can't get to your place. There are people like that. And tonight I'm going to lead you to pray. Because some of you have them, but you don't even know that that is the person. You know, in Africa, all kinds of things happen. One lady lived with me. She was 39. We prayed and prayed. No husband. What is this problem? Then one day I went to God. I said, this, God, this one is different. And the Lord said to me, she has one aunt in the village. That was all the clear. So I called her and said, Margaret, what's the problem? You have one aunt. She said, yes, that aunt is very good. She's wonderful. Every month I send money to her because there is a lamp that must not be put out in the family, physically. So that aunt takes money from her to buy oil to pour on the lamp. And as I was ministering to that girl, it occurred to me that oh, except that lamb dies and goes out, she will never be married. So we began to send arrows. I don't believe in fetish things, but sometimes there are certain things that are true, they are real. You won't believe it. Somebody died, and, and this aunt died, and the lamp went out. Two months, she came to me and said, behold the man. And I was scared because she got married at, at 40. And I was wondering, God, baby, and all that. So she heard I was preaching in Lagos, and she came. And the Lord led me to take an offering. She said she was going to the hospital with the money in her hand, in, you know, in her bag, for a test. And the Holy Ghost said, give that. She gave it that month. She got pregnant. If you see the baby boy, God is worthy. God is worthy. It's not a message I like to preach, beloved. But it may be because of somebody here. Your seat is there. It's been decorated. Beautiful. The environment is wonderful. But you've not been able to get there. Because you're on the floor. Now that you have risen up, you need to deal with the people that want to hurt you. The people that want to hurt you. And the people that want to have you. They love you and they hate you at the same time. Tonight we are dealing with them. And finally, we have people that are there to help you. They are there to help you. The gyroses of life. And this can come in different shades and different colors and different sizes. You must learn to identify the relationships that are in your life. A lot of us, because we don't know how to manage God-sent relationships, we have thrown away the baby with the bathwater. People that will have helped you to get to your throne, and you sitting on that throne affecting many other people, some of you, you have misbehaved, and these people that will have helped you have left. That secretary, that PA, that friend, that God sent woman, you just messed up the relationship of the people that will have loved you, that will have helped you, that will have helped you. Beloved, I want you to understand this thing. Inside your place of destiny, there are places. So when you occupy a place, it is a step to occupy the next place. Inside that place. God does not show you the picture once and for all. Not at all. Once, one day at a time. Something that leads to another thing and leads to another thing. Because God will test you before he trusts you. And I want to just spend the remaining few minutes on the people that are sent to help you. So you can occupy your place. The first person is you. You are sent to you. To help you. And therefore, you must believe in yourself. 
A lot of us have what I call, you know, complex. And it, it manifests and we don't even know that it does. There are certain indications that will let you know if you are suffering from inferiority complex. There are several things, maybe about eight things or so. I don't have the time now. But the first one is a pessimistic outlook on life. You look at life from a negative aspect. It's a sign that you are suffering from complex. It can't be done. I don't think so. Is it people like me they are looking for? I don't. And you have a place to occupy. And you are the first helper of yourself to occupy that place. You must arise tonight, oh beautiful maid. A pessimistic outlook on life. How do you see life? Wake up in the morning and be happy. Wake up in the morning and sing for joy. You may not see the wind, you may not see the rain, it doesn't matter. You may not be where you ought to be yet, but you are not where you used to be. So it's important for you to believe in yourself and to celebrate yourself and to like yourself. Make it your habit every morning to be happy. No matter what you are going through, you are the first helper of yourself. They look at you and they say, can any good thing come out of it? Nazareth? They say, go and, go and see Jesus. Can't you see how it came out? I tell women, they say, look at you, you are too fat. Tell the person, you don't know the Bible. The Bible says the righteous shall be fat. <laughs> what are you talking about? They say, look at you, you are, so, you are so ugly. Tell the person, I think you need a pair of glasses. You must learn to celebrate yourself. A woman and her husband had a misunderstanding and they needed to go out. They were going to the zoo. When they got to the zoo, some of you have heard me share this before. When they got to the zoo, the man said, see your family members. The woman said, yes, my in-laws. My in-laws. Amen. Some women will almost kill themselves emotionally because of that. Did you hear what my husband said? You to look for a reply now. How can a man say you animals are your family members? Wonderful. They are looking so beautiful. In-laws, hello. had a challenge with his wife for three days they were not speaking to one another that's not right that's not right so he had a very important you know um, appointment he now picked his pen and he wrote a note wake me up at 5 a.m he put it beside his wife when it was 5 a.m the wife took a paper wake up it is 5 a.m she put it beside the bed the man woke up at 7 a.m. You must have an answer for everybody that tries to put you down. That's what I'm talking about. Stop believing the lies. They said I am ugly. They said that one 15 years ago and you are still believing it? She said, so and so said, are they God? Egyptians are not God, they are men. Whatever they have said about you that is not according to the word, come on, get it off. You are the first helper of yourself. If you are married, your husband is your second helper. And you must understand that. So those of you that have complex, and some of us do, you must get out of that. Some of you, another thing that makes you to know that you have complex is lack of confidence. Shyness is not a gift of the spirit. I can't take the offering. You know I'm shy. It's not a fruit of the Spirit. Be confident. You can do it. Nobody brought this thing from heaven. Start little by little, little by little. Occupying your place is what we're talking about. And made, you've got to arise to go and sit on that seat. Can I tell you something? No seat remains vacant for life. If you don't occupy it, Delilah's and Jezebel's are waiting to occupy it. So go occupy it. Extreme sensitivity to people's opinion. What will people say? What will that person say? Hey, ha, who? If you succeed, they will talk. If you don't succeed, you, they will talk. You better succeed. Let them talk. Striving to be somebody else. 
Hey, let people inspire you, but don't try to copy people. Don't try to be somebody else. You'll be speaking like your Jew, and the Bible says. It doesn't even fit you. A critical and judgmental view of other people. When you come to church, you look for what to criticize. You can't find. You say, can't you see the choir? One is moving like this. Shut up. It's a sign of complex. You criticize everything. If I were the one to hold, to put that flower there, it would have been arranged. You know, spectators, they know how to play ball. Hey, 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 do it like this. It's a lie. You can't do it. You can't. Inability to accept praise. Thank you. Ah, don't thank me. Don't thank me. It's God. It's God. Did God come down to do this? Hey, it's a religious spirit. When they praise you, take it. Chew it as chewing gum and throw it away to God. You look beautiful. Thank you very much. Pastor Yemisi will say, I know it. He say, you look beautiful. He say, I know it. If she respects you, she will use time to say it. Ah, <laughs> I know it, oh, but thank you. <laughs> Stop living your life to please people. So you are the first helper of yourself if that seat will be occupied. And there are different seats you must occupy in your life. Another person that is a helper if you are married is your husband. Please, treat your husband well. And do your husband's well. Let the man know that he has value. There are husbands that are wishing that their wives would die. They are Christians because the woman is just frustrating the man. You know, women, you have power. Treat him well. Let the little boy on his inside come out and play. We're talking about how to occupy your place. We're telling you to arise so that your marriage will not remain on the ground. These are the ways by which God helps you to occupy your place. When last did you sing for your husband? I still sang for my own this morning. <laughs> when last did you use your husband's name to compose a song? When last did you do that? When we tell you to occupy your place in destiny, it's not just about going to China to preach. If your Christianity does not work at home, please don't bother to export it. Don't bother. Let's see you leave what you want to go and preach. When last, look for a good pet name for your husband. And some of you have been calling your husband the same name since 25 years ago when you got married. <laughs> darling, darling, now it is darling. You have so much localized the name. That means that name has expired. Exchange it for another one. Do another thing. Do another thing. Look for something. Treat your husband very well. I call my husband darling. But I noticed that the name is Gajin. So now I call him your royal majesty. Your royal majesty. And I think I told you last year when I wake up every morning, me, I kneel down to greet him. And I call him all kinds of names. Beautiful names. At 54, you are aging so graciously. You make me look forward to aging. Good morning, sir. When I was leaving Nigeria, you know, Two days ago, going to Lagos, when I was leaving my base, my husband held me in his arms. He said to me, you are a good person. What is it that any woman gives to her husband that you have not given to me? I'm saying this from the depth of my heart. I love you, darling. As you are going, I release you. Go be a blessing to your generation. Your thoughts towards me are good. I allow you to be yourself. <laughs> Occupy your place. Maid, what are you doing on the floor? It's time for you to arise. Celebrate the man. There is no man that is so bad that he cannot change. Start treating him like a king. Don't have London marriage. Have Bible marriage. And husbands that are watching or listening to the tape, no woman will treat you like a king if you don't treat her like a queen. Value your wife. Validate her. Let her know that she's loved. A woman needs 13 meaningful touches per day. Not, they say we should touch you with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
Not at all. Meaningful touches. As a woman ages, sometimes she feels ugly because we put on more weight as we age. So she wants you to let her know that you are still affectionate. She wants you to wink in the crowd. She wants you to thumb up for her. You are telling her, my secretary may be beautiful, but you are the thing, the real thing, the end thing. You are. If you treat your wife like a queen, oh God, she will treat you like a king. And finally, your spiritual parents or spiritual relationships that you have will help you to solidify your taking your place. Treat your pastor very well. There are battles your anointing cannot handle. Treat your pastor very well. Give your pastor double honor. One thing I have come to discover. If you help people to occupy their places, God will send people to help you occupy your place. Maids, I want you to arise tonight. I want you to know that God is for you.